This is Flame Flash, a FlameFlash.net podcast. Well, just an hour or two ago, not exactly sure on the time, but Steve Jobs of Apple fame passed away. So I would like to change things up for a moment. I will get to the Raptor Report, but first I would like to think of Apple. Think of Mr. Jobs and offer my own meager moment of silence. I grew up with Apple, and with apples, frankly. We had an apple tree in the backyard that we'd visit and enjoy making homemade cider every year, for the couple of years we lived there at least. But I grew up with an Apple IIc and a Commodore 64. Those were my computers. I learned at an early age how to type and spell the word load, run. I didn't have a cartridge with a picture of Mario Brothers. I typed it in. I inserted a five and a quarter inch floppy disk and then I trounced my mom. Bopping those turtles from underneath right when she was about to kick them off the platform. Playing on a green screen monitor. The original Mario Brothers. On an Apple IIc. My fir- the Nintendo was first connected because dad worked his technological magic to our computer using the color monitor that we had gotten at that point. I grew up with Apple. Apple works was the word processor I used to first start writing my stories. Apple Work Spreadsheets was where I first showed my angel retentive tendencies and took full inventory of how blessed I was with all my video games. It's what I use raptor.com for now. I grew up watching as apples evolved. My dad got to see how computers evolved from the large room filling computer wearing away with a raised floor to hide all of the wires the air conditioner always running at least in that one room to a MacBook Pro a power book if you will that's what it was then he had at work an Apple that if you hit a special key combination would flip because it had a Windows board in it as well. No, it was not sharing anything. These were two separate hard drives, two separate motherboards, and he would hit, I think it was open Apple, open Apple, enter, and it would switch. That's right, I'm old school, none of this command button. Open and closed Apple, thank you very much.
but it evolved and I grew. I edit this podcast on an iMac, one of the first Intel iMacs. I have attempted to record this podcast on an iPad. Didn't do a very good job with it. So I switched to using this headset, but I tried. I have always known Apple. We right now have a G3 case. We use Apple G3 case. We use as a doorstop. My college Apple G4 still works, still runs even though it's over 10 years old. Or is it? Yeah. I think it is. Lost track of time a little bit. Have a G4 800 megahertz computer, which was my wife's first tower of our household, our home. It got a little too crowded, so she eventually changed to a uh, Windows-based laptop, but boy, does she hate that thing in comparison. She grew up on Apples, too, amazingly. But I remember watching as it changed. And it changes again. Feel free to share podcast at flameflash.net or at flameflash on Twitter. I'm sure there are others out there also remembering their Steve Jobs or Apple stories, their memories. Apple has been a cornerstone to my family. The toddler uses an iP iPad <laughs> before he's eloquent with his speech. He knows how to navigate that thing. And he learned how to do that before he learned how to navigate the English language. That's a testament to how easy to use that these devices really are. No, they're not infallible, but I personally do feel they're better. I'll move on, though. The Raptor Report. So if I'm a little calmer, quieter than usual, um, it's with good reason. Many amazing and good memories with both my parents with the app with Apple products. They've been a cornerstone of pretty much my entire life technology wise the uh, kids accidentally launched a big money deluxe it's one of those puzzle games um, made by the same folks that do bejeweled or peggle they quickly quit it <laughs> I can't recall what they were actually trying to launch, but they quickly quit it. But Big Money Deluxe does show up on my uh, Raptor report, so I thought I'd give it a nod. The Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventures. If you haven't gotten it yet, go get it. Pick it up for your 3DS or DSi. It's available for free right now on the Nintendo stores for the respective systems. It's a worthwhile game. You can also multiplayer play between a 3DS and a DSi. I found this out firsthand. 
it's a harder game than you'd expect, too. It is your classic A Link to the Past style gameplay. So it's over the head Link, but with enough good graphics to really enjoy the quality and slightly cartoonish nature of it. I actually started up StarCraft 2 and played through a couple of campaigns there. I'm not all the way through the story yet. Yes, I know I'm taking my time. I like the game. I really do. But like instancing in World of Warcraft, I f feel like I can't pause StarCraft. I need to get all the way through each mission before stopping. Just because it otherwise you lose your pace and tone to the story or you forget what you were doing or where some units were I also had a little trouble with StarCraft 2 just picking it back up because I'd forgotten some of the controls like uh, control shift click adds unit X to currently selected group so I'd make my medic and I'd want my medic to go and join you know the uh, flamethrower guys I forget what the units called and then the medic just stands there because he is now his own group and the flamethrower guys are just kind of loose and carefree and they're not in their own group anymore So yeah, control, shift, click. Mental note, flame flash. Mental note. Magic the Gathering 2012. I finally got a chance to play the new expansion. And I love it. Being the arch nemesis is so much more fun than going against an arch nemesis those unbalancing cards the arch nemesis card deck it changes the game completely I'm very curious to see what happens if I uh, take it online I've unlocked the first deck which is a uh, black zombie deck very interesting strategy regarding this deck because it's all about the zombies and the brains. Be interesting to see what more cards show up in this deck because actually when I beat the first Arch Nemesis level with the deck, I unlocked two cards, which was surprising to me. I liked that. Two cards is nice. Maybe that's what happens when you unlock uh, cards in that game. I kind of cheated and paid to unlock all of the base cards. So we'll just have to wait and see. Finally, today's the last day of Brewfest, or the last night of Brewfest. It was a really good run, and I'm looking forward to going in tonight and trading in all my tokens and seeing what I can fully and finally get for all of my characters. The Swift Brewfest Ram has taunted me multiple times, either winning it on characters that already had it, or not winning it at all and watching as somebody else pulls it out of their uh, treasure jug. But I did score one on my main druid, so a new achievement there, a new mount for the count, and this has been a really amazing brew fest, especially thanks to the wife's help in it. So I'll be getting back into brew fest tonight, so I need to keep moving on. Chaos orbs. We're going to move on into the news. Chaos orbs. Those little things that drop off of heroic boss, uh, heroic final bosses of dungeons, they're going to become tradable in 4.3. So start stockpiling them now on your mains so that your alts can use them and skill up and 
gear themselves as they see fit. Uh, other gaming. The Monopoly game at McDonald's. I think it gets lamer every year. Two years ago, you got to enjoy seeing an actual McDo Monopoly game board. Click to roll the dice. You'd click, you'd enter your code, you'd click, you'd go. You'd possibly land on chance, which actually gave you something of value, even though tiny value, it was still something of value. And you progressed. You actually felt like, hey, if I just land on that darn boardwalk, I could win or that darn Vermont Avenue, or whichever one of the three or two that you just needed to win. It really felt like you could. I think that was the year also that uh, they had Best Buy coupons on every large fry. That was pure win for us, that's for sure. I think I got a game almost for free because we uh, heavily participated in eating at McDonald's for that one month. Last year the game got much lamer and it didn't feel like you really had an honest chance anymore. It was just you clicking on something, choosing something rather dull and going now I can't even remember it. It was that not lasting for me. This year, same problem. Your Mr. Monopoly, Mr. Moneybags, throwing chance cards at the hat token and trying to get it in there? If that doesn't scream, I'm rigged, nothing does. So far, we've won... 60 my coke reward points that'd be great except for the fact that i don't drink coke or coke products wild cherry pepsi all the way so what am i going to do with those totally pointless playstation 2 games are now coming to the playstation 3 for download for download so if you still want backwards compatibility, you need to go and buy a launch system and upgrade it with a hard drive like I did. Sony, if you can put PlayStation 2 games in the store, you can put a PlayStation 2 emulator on the system. And a PlayStation 1 emulator for that matter. I know you want to make money. There are plenty of people out there that will would rather buy the downloadable discs or not have the downloadable or not have the discs anymore and possibly rebuy the game. But let those of us that have a collection we're proud of also upgrade to a slim model PS3. I'd really appreciate that. Oh well. Speaking of the PS3, PlayStation Network downloadables picked up NBA Jam on Fire Edition have not had a chance to play it yet the PS3 gave me a heart attack last night because it forgot its um, video mode so I had to reset that I thought it had totally died but it was just fortunately forgotten that it was supposed to be sending through the HDMI port still freaked me out but there is a PlayStation Network promotion going on. If you spend fifty dollars on the sixty dollars on the PlayStation Network, you'll get ten dollars next month. I've already spent fifteen. I was going to spend fifteen anyway. I was planning on getting NBA Jam on Fire Edition. Kind of doubt I'm going to hit that sixty dollar mark, but we'll see what they offer. Chrono Trigger is out on the PlayStation Network now, the place PlayStation 1 original. I have it on disc. I don't need it. When I want to play it, 
I'll play it by putting in the disc and playing it on my PS3 that way. It's still really tempting because then I could actually play it on the PSP. But I haven't really had time to play the Final Fantasy VII on the PSP. So I'm not going to pick up another RPG just to let sit there. Sorry, Star Ocean. Final Fantasy XIII-2. That's right, XIII-2. They weren't unlucky enough with it the first time around from critic reviews. I like the game. That they had to give it a sequel. Now, here's the funny thing. This particular sequel has pre-order incentives from GameStop, Amazon, and Best Buy. Go with Best Buy. If you're going to pre-order this game, go with Best Buy. And here's why. GameStop has a character skin. So you get a free character skin. You choose for the character to be dressed in something else throughout the entire game. Big deal. No. Not a big deal. Not impressed, GameStop. Were you guys just napping when... Squeenix came by and said, hey, do you want to offer a pre-order bonus? Uh, okay. We'll take everybody's $5, too, like a backward store. Seriously, folks. If you're pre-ordering a game, pre-order online. Then you're charged when you sh it, the game ships. You don't hand the store $5 for them to put in a bank account and let's sit there and collect interest until the game actually comes out. Games possibly get delayed sometimes. Look at Diablo 3. Not that it technically ever had a release date, but you get my meaning. Put your reservations somewhere where you're not charged until it ships. Best Buy Online. That'll do it. Amazon. Amazon has a boss battle Omega who then joins your team. Probably some summonable creature that once you defeat him he becomes a summon. Um, while cool and way to go Amazon, both GameStop and Amazon's pre-order bonuses smell like downloadable content. So six months after the game releases you'll be able to buy these things on the PlayStation Network or perhaps they'll be included free in PlayStation Plus we can only hope Best Buy however you have a story a small book hopefully it's actually a physical book the story of the transition between Final Fantasy 13 1 and Final Fantasy 13 2 and boy is that a mouthful but that, to me, makes it the best bang for your buck. Unless somebody's selling it on eBay, you're not going to have a chance at this book again. Most likely. If somebody pirates it and digitizes it, maybe. But to have the original copy with the original cover, whatever art they decide to include, Best Buy pre-order is the way to go. Other gaming. Portal 2 has downloadable content, speaking of which, and it's free. The Portal 2 downloadable content, if you have it on Steam, it automatically updated. Don't worry about it. It's in there. If you have it on the PlayStation 3 or the Xbox, go download it. Grab it. It's free. If you like Portal, if you have Portal 2, you should do so. Grab it. The add-on content, that is. All right, I have a beef. I have a beef with backwards compatibility. I just ranted about it regarding the PlayStation 3. I'm going to rant about it regarding the Wii U. That's right, the Wii U. It's not even out yet, and I'm already going negative on it. That's because it doesn't backwards compatibility support GameCube. The first disc-based system of the Nintendo, the GameCube. It's great that you're going backwards compatible with the Wii. You have to. I mean, for crying out loud, the Wii U is even still using the Wii remotes. The uh, Wii Motion Plus remotes, but they're still the Wii remotes. 
totally understandable. Totally what they should do. But they should also include GameCube compatibility ports, memory card slots, and being able to take the discs. Or, better yet, make a virtual memory card slot and have us all buy uh, classic controllers for it. Or use the Wii Motion Wii U iPad controller. But don't just cut out backwards compatibility. Now, the reason... Because that means... That takes one thing away from everybody who's going to think about upgrading. I have a Wii. It's backwards compatible to the GameCube. I have GameCube games. Just today when I got home from work... I caught the kids playing Mario Dance Mix on the GameCube. So, you know, that whole obnoxiously large pad was out on the floor. And they were just bopping around having a grand old time on it. I'm not going to deny them the opportunity to play a GameCube game just because the Wii U doesn't have backwards compatibility. So the Wii will still be on my movie, on my, uh, entertainment center shelf you know the one behind me in the video it's going to still be there so what justification do I have in getting a Wii U other than Wii U games since Nintendo wasn't very smart as far as uh, downloadable content and downloadable games I'm not sure they're going to have a way to transfer my downloads my original Mario Brothers my Super Mario Brothers, my Donkey Kong Country series over to the Wii U and play it there. So what use do I have in a Wii U except for Wii U games? You've shot yourselves in the foot, Nintendo. Might be the very first Nintendo console that I don't get. Besides for the Virtual Boy. Unreal Engine 3 is coming to Flash near you. Flash, that is the mobile or the internet platform, if you're not familiar. Hello, newbie. Newbie's getting hot and grumpy. If you hear a little baby in the background. Flash is the platform that you can sometimes watch videos in or play little interactive Facebook games in. Well, now you can play Unreal Tournament 3 based games in there. This is first person shooter platform stuff on Facebook, possibly. That is huge. That is a revolutionary change. It's on live on Facebook and it's scary think of it plug a Xbox 360 USB controller into your computer and then play with your friends in a first-person shooter on Facebook that's mind-boggling not that I'll probably do it since I'm not very good at first-person shooters but who knows? Uh, in more geeky news, Leonard Nimoy is retiring. I thought this was going to be the sad, growing older story of the week. But at 80, or older than 80, Mr. Spock is no longer going to be visiting Star Trek conventions. He visited his last one. An end of a Trek era. Find a f kind of feel dirty um, talking about the iPhone 4S at all today. But what is neat is that we're going to continue seeing Steve 
Jobs' invisible hand in prod in Apple products for at least another five years, if not longer. Who knows what that man sketched out and dreamed up and is simply sitting in research and development somewhere at Apple. That's the amazing legacy. The iPhone 4S was announced, though. It's going to AT&T, Verizon, and Sprint. There are upgrades. It's better. It's stronger. It's more powerful than the original iPhone 4. It's not an iPhone 5. But it's still better. It's still stronger. Me, I'll still stick with my Android-based phone. The copycat. I like it. It works. I have an iPad. I don't need another iOS mini device. Ghostbusters. Yeah. Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters is returning to theaters in select locations every Thursday starting October 14th. I don't recall how long it lasts but there's going to be a single showing in theaters starting October 14th. Ghostbusters. Back on the big screen. I like it. Speaking of remakes, Disney is now considering Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Finding Nemo, and Monsters Incorporated in 3D because of how successful The Lion King in 3D was for its two-week run. All I have to say, Disney wears Aladdin. Honestly, seriously, come on. The magic carpet flying through the Cave of Wonders with those exploding piles of gold into lava, that's 3D gold. Pardon the really bad pun. Beauty and the Beast in 3D? That one I don't really understand. Little Mermaid? Eh. Finding Nemo, Monsters Incorporated, those kind of make sense in 3D. I mean, I didn't really think Lion King made sense in 3D, but it certainly did well at the box office. It makes sense for Disney. It makes sense for Disney to recreate these things. Where are your original works, though, Disney? What scares me is it's almost as though after Tangled, they're not sure where to go. They've got to have more things on the back burner. These movies have to be being worked on and produced for quite a long time before they actually come out, or at least they used to with cel-shaded animation. I don't know what the turnaround is for computer animation, but I would think it would still take quite a bit of work, quite a bit of data. Lots of, quite possibly, Apple computers. So, where's your next work, Disney? Don't give me just rehashes. I'd like another princess. But I, they're almost out. What other fables are there left? I was um, thinking there was actually the grim fairy, fairy tale with the princess and the bag of dresses, I think it was. Or coats. Where one of her coats that she disguises herself in is a multi-fur coat made of every animal from her particular kingdom. The other three dresses are uh, progressively much, much more fancy. And she sneaks into royal balls and dances with the prince. By day, she is in the fur coat hiding, working as a maid in the castle. And I have just horribly summarized the thing, but 
that would be an option for Disney to go at least. Finally, in stupid law news, kind of like the uh, Facebook law that Missouri finally backed down on and they're not going to do students not being able to friend their teachers or vice versa. Florida is reducing its rules regarding um, inappropriate picture texting. I believe the term is sexting. So foolish children and foolish parents who buy their children camera-enabled phones aren't going to get in as big of trouble as early. Now you do have to report it if you are one of if you are the recipient, which I think is an absolutely horrible piece of the law. Just kill it. Kill the file. End the file. You should get in trouble if you are spreading the file. If you receive the file, why are you going to be getting the person who sent you the file in trouble? If that person was, say, a uh, female friend that you actually were okay with getting the image from, or male friend, stop trying to regulate my family morals. My kids aren't going to have the capability of receiving these darn things. I'm choosing that. If parents want to let their kids have the possibility of receiving them, that's their business, not the government's. Yes, it's wrong when it's underage pictures being received by adult age, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about peer-to-peer -peer photo sharing, just in a very lewd, bad way get out of it stop caring because that picture that you're reporting about you're going to have to show it to law enforcement law enforcement are adults they're going to have to keep it for evidence quote unquote that's just that's just as sick and wrong not to say that everyone in law enforcement is a pervert or something because they're certainly not but why lay that temptation in front of them? Why not just say, end it? If you're spreading it, that's one thing. If you're just receiving it and ending it, that's another. Let the peer review process do its magic in school like it always has. And its detriment. That's why I find it funny when celebrities go and say they want to end bullying. Bullying is a sad, unfortunate part of life. You should try to help have a stop put to it when you find out about it happening to your child. But that doesn't mean you're capable of outlawing it. I don't know how you can legislate morality like that. Just don't. But I'm Flameflash of flameflash.net. Flame uh, podcast at flameflash.net sends me an email. At Flameflash sends me a tweet. And I'm even on the PlayStation Network as Flameflash. But with a sad farewell to Apple and Mr. Jobs, I bid you adieu.